Speaking of self-reported physical activity data, this brings us to the International Physical Activity Questionnaire, which as the name uh, implies, is a questionnaire that is used internationally as a way to measure physical activity. So in your readings this week, we are actually going to see, you're going to see samples of both the short form um, and there's also a long form of this questionnaire. And this questionnaire asks questions about what people did in the last seven days, how much vigorous exercise they did, moderate exercise, and how much walking and sitting they did as well. The long form, as you'll see, asks more questions about like occupational physical activity and transportation physical activity as well. Um, but this one is going to focus more on just kind of these basic three. Okay, so um, this is the, uh, the IPAC short, as we talked about before. So you fill in how many days per week um, uh, you did of vigorous physical activity and how many hours and minutes per day of that vigorous activity as well. How much moderate activity, like we said, how much walking and how much sitting. That's it. That's the short form. So at the end of someone filling out an IPAC, you have to take that information and then put it into a form that we can actually do something with and to compare people with as well. So before we get into scoring of the IPAC, we have to understand this concept of METs or metabolic equivalents, which you've probably seen before in your degree. Okay, METs are a great way of comparing different types of activities by comparing basically that activity to um, energy expenditure at rest. Okay, so one MET is equal to energy expenditure at rest. So like three METs would mean that that particular activity is three times the, um, the oxygen uh, burned <laughs> compared to when someone is at rest. So it's a higher intensity activity. Okay, so vigorous intensity activities are around the six METs or more. There are some that are really high and even in the kind of the eight, nine range as well. So once we know the metabolic equivalence of certain activities, then we can start putting, kind of adding up all the activities and putting them into a standard form, that met amount that we can then use to compare different people that have completed that survey. So this slide, it's actually from one of your readings this week, it talks about now that you have your survey results, how do you actually score it? One of the first steps is to convert all the hours to minutes and then to truncate amounts of physical activity of more than 180 minutes per week and not consider anything over 180 minutes per week. So that's one of the actual limitations of the study is it's not so great uh, of the survey. It's not so great at capturing those kind of high, high, high levels of physical activity. Okay. So with your walking minutes, what you do is you're going to times them by 3.3 METs um, and the amount of days that they completed it, moderate activities by 4 METs, and uh, vigorous minutes by uh, 8 METs. Okay. And then you kind of add all of those up to get a total MET minutes of physical activity per week. Okay. And then when you have that, you score the person as either having high, moderate, or low levels of physical activity. So high would mean that they got vigorous intensity activity at least three days per week and a total met minutes of about 1,500. Um, of 1500 okay? And or they get over 3,000 total combining all those other three, they get 3,000 total met minutes per week. So for this one, a high physical activity score on the IPAC, someone could actually get that by just completing walking or moderate intensity activities and never completing vigorous activities, but they're just getting a lot of it. And you can read what the, the calculation is to um, call someone moderate for physical activity, but there's kind of three different ways that we would score someone as moderate, depending on what kind of if they're saying how much vigorous, moderate, um, or walking activities they're getting and the total amount of METs uh, per week as well. And then like I said, someone would get a low score if they don't meet the, the criteria for moderate or high. Okay, So there's lots of limitations of the IPAC. Probably the biggest limitation is that it's not good data. It's not great data. Um, it's okay for getting a general sense at the population level how active people are, but the IPAC 
almost always in a lot of studies, meta-analyses, they often show that, that the IPAC tends to overestimate physical activity. And it's just not really that sensitive. Okay, it's not really that accurate. It doesn't really get the true amounts of physical activity or METs per week because again, people are self-reporting and they might just not really understand how to complete the survey or not complete it properly. Okay, you could also argue that the standards are too low. So if I were to get 20 to 30 minute sessions of vigorous activity, vigorous intensity activity and three 20 minute walks, that would be considerate moderate. Uh, amounts of physical activity and you could argue maybe that that would be considered low okay and also the data tends to fit a non-normal distribution and whereas usually with physical activity it does fit a normal distribution so again the data is so 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 it's okay it depends what you're using it for um, we still use it in in research but there are better ways of measuring physical activity this one's just easy it's super easy to administer and it's quick and easy for someone to fill out as well so that's why we keep using it but it's not as the data isn't as robust as it could be so something to keep in mind if you see a headline or you see some results from a study where they measure physical activity using an IPAC um, often that data is going to overestimate true physical activity